Jennifer Lopez has been at the center of a whirlwind of controversy and negative press. It began in the wake of her releasing her heavily promoted comeback album, This Is Me Now, which was marketed as her most personal effort and was clearly intended to be a crowning artistic achievement for her, a la Beyonce's Lemonade or Ariana's Sweetener. It's very evident that JLo wanted this album to be the album that finally gave her what she's never had much of during her entire career, artistic merit and critical praise. The album proved to be pretty insignificant quality-wise, and it completely bombed, spending only one week on the Billboard Hot 200, which wouldn't seem like a big deal until you consider the amount of money put into this project, which resulted in a $20 million film that dropped alongside the album's release. Legacy acts don't tend to release commercial blockbuster albums during the twilight stages of their career, but JLo and Co. took a bet on themselves. The film, although ambitious, is too incoherent and self-obsessed to be truly compelling or worthy of an artistic appraisal. Alongside the film and album is a documentary chronicling the making of the aforementioned film. The goal of the documentary seemingly being an attempt to show just how real Jennifer Lopez is. This has been a theme throughout her entire career, from her song I'm Real to Jenny from the Block to Same Girl. Used to have a little, now I have a lot, sang JLo, famously trying to show that she can simultaneously be real and rich and famous. Only now does it seem that JLo is practically begging the public to take notice of how real she truly is, which ironically just ends up exposing how disconnected she is. A lot of stars who came up in the tabloid era have tried to soften and melt their image into the new age of relatability, and it simply doesn't work for everyone. That self-indulgent image worked for JLo during the tabloid era because she was still in touch with what's considered in and cool and had a machine like no other backing her, Sony. But at some point you have to accept that you are no longer the ultra-relatable girl from the Bronx. Jennifer Lopez is a glamour girl, a tabloid fixture, a pure celebrity. She is generally fashionably cool and sexy, but a celebrity brand first and foremost especially as it relates to public image. She does not have the genuine relatability and charisma of someone like fellow Bronx native Cardi B, for example. Um, this is how I press it. Ah, what the fuck? And she's tried to force it, which in the Instagram age has led to her slipping out of favor with the general public, which is fine. Not every star is relatable. And in an era where seemingly everyone is latching on to relatability marketing, it would actually be nice to have some larger than life fun pop stars that aren't exclusively built on parasocial connections. Her famous rival, for lack of better words, Mariah Carey, has never pretended to be anything but over the top, saying that she's incapable of living in the real world. She works out in six inch heels. She wears these long luxurious gowns and she just embraces being who she is, which is an over the top glamor diva. And while not being exactly alike, I think that space within marketing fits more closely to who the public views JLo as than who she's trying to portray now. I would argue that JLo's larger than life celebrity led brand is at direct odds with her attempt at relatability marketing which is in part why her latest film, documentary, and album came up feeling empty. Now granted, there are obviously genuine emotions expressed in both the films and the album. The album makes some stabs at emotional depth, even if it's more or less just one long and mostly one note love song. The film, on the other hand, crams so many things in at once that it often feels like it's at direct odds with the relative simplicity of the music itself. The documentary chronicling the making of the movie tries to preemptively convince the audience of how great, daring, and bold of an artistic risk the film and album was, and how JLo is not only a hard worker, but at the same time the down-to-earth magnetic girl she's always been. Funding your own art can be a bold decision, but it comes across as less impressive when you consider just how much JLo is worth. She also talked about how many companies rejected her idea for her visual album and film, claiming that visual albums just don't sell. But if we're being honest, if this was someone like Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Rihanna, or Ariana Grande, studios would be banging down their doors to get a hold of their exclusive new musical project, because they have passionate fan bases and a larger than life demand and allure that keeps people invested in their new musical projects. JLo hasn't built up that same brand for herself, and now it seems like she's trying to course correct, but it's just a little too late. No one can say JLo isn't a hard worker though, because beyond even just the album, documentary, and film is the upcoming tour to accompany her project, titled the This Is Me Now Tour. 
Or should I say formerly titled that because in April of 2024, JLo and her team subtly changed the name of the tour to the This Is Me Live tour, basically rebranding it as a Greatest Hits tour instead. According to Variety, this was due to a lack of tickets sold for the tour. Now I'm not sure that that strategy will do anything beyond bring more bad press for JLo. The problem isn't with the tour name itself, it's more than assumed that a tour by a 54 year old legacy artist, even if not explicitly called a greatest hits tour, is going to have most of her chart toppers. The problem seems to lie more with her image than the tour's title. Sure, JLo's known as a great live performer, at least dancing wise. But like I've said, her image doesn't carry the same clout that it once did in the early aughts and 2010s. The underperformance of her tour, album, and relatability marketing all coincided with a lot of people on TikTok and the internet sharing their negative encounters with JLo. I have a JLo story. The year is 2019 and I'm dancing with Jennifer Lopez in the 2019 Grammys and she was asked to do the Motown tribute and she said yes. I walk into rehearsal the first day to the Motown tribute rehearsal. There was only three black people, including myself. We probably now into like the third or fourth day of rehearsal, right? And that article came out saying, you know, why is J-Lo doing the Motown tribute? Like, I don't know if y'all remember that, but an article came out saying, I think it was like Variety, but somebody, something big, a publication came out asking why she's doing it. The, the team sat us down and they were like, I know you guys are seeing some negative press and blah, 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 blah. Child, she gonna walk in and tell us. Y'all know what? We're gonna show them why I'm doing it. I remember she like raised her... <laughs> I was dying. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. I was so, so confused. I remember this. Like, I really remember this moment. It was me and the other black dancer that were opposites. We were right. It was her in the middle, and then it was us two. She said, they have to move. They have to move. And literally looks at me dead in my face. And she goes, so what are we going to do with your hair? Oh, yeah, girl. I get it. Listen, I get it. Is my hair Motown? No. Ain't nothing about this performance Motown. Ain't no Mo, ain't no town in here. So I'm trying to think, what's everybody else going to do? Child, look at what they was doing. On one hand, JLo is a woman in power. I find that women in power have to be more stern so that people can actually take them seriously. With that being said, there is a difference between being stern and just rude or going on an ego trip. Even Jennifer's former background singer spoke out. Okay, you guys, I'm on my way to work and I wanted to just like answer a question while I'm at a stoplight. No, I was on more, um, I was on four other songs. I was on, I'm glad, the one, loving you baby i heart you and um and jenny from the block i feel like all of the other ones excluding jenny from the block are very much true blue background vocals um i think the problem with jenny from the block is that they cut my laugh and um they kept ad libs and they turned her vocals like all the way down and the from the Bronx part is me and it's just, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Jennifer Lopez and her lack of vocal talent has been a conversation for years now. I don't waste dream. No. Whoa, I'm sorry, I'm sorry everybody, I'm sorry everybody. Now having background singers on your record to achieve a fuller sound or even just a stylistic choice isn't anything new. But the reason the JLo situation has become such a major talking point is because there are various songs, including her career-defining work, where the background singers tend to take lead and the volume is so loud on a lot of the choruses where JLo appears to be completely absent or extremely low in the mix to where you can't hear her at all. It's not like she's leading the background singers, like for example, the way Tony Braxton did on He Wasn't Man Enough, or Whitney Houston on It's Not Right But It's Okay. Clear examples where the leading ladies use very present and prominent background singers for a stylistic effect, but still have their voice front and center, and more importantly, their artistic stamp on the song. And for lack of better words, people like Whitney and Tony are just undeniable vocal talents, so it doesn't stick out as much because they own their songs with their voice. And even if you don't have the strongest voice, there's still a lot of favor to be had in a unique or appealing tone, which JLo doesn't have either. She's carried by charisma in her music and a good beat and melody, not anything necessarily artistically driven. On Jenny from the Block, you can even hear the background singers laugh in place of JLo's. You don't have to be a vocal powerhouse to be a great pop star. I enjoy songs like Waiting for Tonight and Play as well, 
But I think in an age where yesteryear's pop star isn't the golden standard, these things are being more analyzed. And JLo, in my opinion, has had a lot of studio trickery to camouflage her vocal limitations. And it's not like she has the raw emotion to make up for it either, because there are many artists who aren't the best technically, but still have emotive vocals. And even with that being the case, I still feel she has some of the worst vocals on record in pop history, notably in her early career. Even people like Mariah Carey have spoken out about it. Beth. Mariah, who calls herself Supergirl, says she often sleeps just three hours a night. When told Lopez claimed to get eight, Mariah said, quote, if I had the luxury of not actually having to sing my own songs, I'd do that too. Now that doesn't discredit what JLo has achieved. Music is only one aspect of her brand, but also with the controversy, the diva antics and stories that follow her, it has made every aspect of her career in general more of a talking point. At the end of the day, love her or hate her, you can't deny the fact that she has had impact. But I think her attempts to brand herself as some relatable girl next door from the Bronx isn't doing her any favors at this stage in her career. If you watch the documentary, legendary actress Jane Fauna warned JLo about putting herself out there in this light and that it could make her a magnet for scrutiny. And boy, was she right. She should lean into the diva persona a little bit more People still may not like it, but at least they'll respect the fact that she's being truer to herself. 